experienced or has enjoyed um, a, a degree of democracy over the period of years. Ghana actually is um, put out there as a shining beacon of democracy, press freedom, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Ghana is uh, governed at this point by the National Democratic Congress with the, the new Democratic, the new um, the Tropic Party, excuse me, um, being their biggest opposition. However, that's not the end of the story. There are other opposition parties all working to make Ghana's democracy what has been touted as a beacon for others to follow. Now, with me in the studio today is uh, Mr. Bruhaman, who is the uh, national chairman of the Progressive People's Party, PPP. Um, the Progressive People's Party came out of the CPP, I believe, and we're going to talk about that and also a number of issues. So welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Baku, for inviting uh, me to come uh, and share uh, the progressive view uh, of the Progressive People's Party uh, and why uh, we are uh, what we are and call ourselves progressives. Uh, you commented in your opening remarks that uh, we came out of the CPP. Yeah. Uh, I would let your audience uh, know that we did not come from the, oh, okay. uh, <laughs> the CPP. Mm -hmm. uh, it just turns out that uh, uh, our, our uh, flag bearer, mm -hmm. the Hindu flag bearer, uh, Dr. Papa Hussi, mm -hmm. uh, was uh, uh, CPP and also was a CPP flag bearer. But the formation of the uh, PPP uh, was not based on it being described as an offshoot of the CPP. Let, let, me, let me get this clear. So to the average reader of the news, Dr. Papa Kwesi Ngun came out of the CPP and formed his own party. He did not take the, C, the, the PPP out of the CPP. He started afresh. He started afresh. You know, the, 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 the Progressive People's Party PPP was started afresh with progressives from CPP, progressives from NDC, Progressive from MPP, progressive from other uh, others in the political uh, spectrum that felt that nothing was going on. So, what does the PPP represent? We know that the CPP was an Ikumaist or it had an Ikumaist meaning. It had a kind of socialist kind of you know, um, ideology. What does the PPP represent? Well, the PPP represents progress. Uh, we believe when we came together. That it wasn't an ideology that was putting food on the table. Uh, that you know, you find a lot of Ghanaians uh, deprived of the basic necessities electricity, uh, water, uh, education, uh, food, uh, transportation, and that we needed to be practical. So we, uh, we call ourselves the pragmatists, you know, solving the, the, the problems on the ground. And that's what PPP's agenda has been since the formation of the party. You're saying that you don't have any affiliation with Nkuma's ideology whatsoever? Well, what is Nkuma's ideology? To provide education for all Ghanaians? What well, is Nkuma's ideology? To provide and jobs and way, for all Ghanaians? Way, <laughs> the way to achieve that, as a matter of fact. Well, that's basically there is, what the there, is, there is no Nkuma way. Where did Nkuma come with those ideas? Did we say then that there is Marcus Gavi uh, ideas? Are we Marcus Gavi? And Marcus Gavi, where did Marcus Gavi uh, obtain those ideas from? Okay. So we needed to be practical. Mm -hmm. And whether an idea that could have been uh, originated from Nkrumah or Marcus Gavi or Buzia or uh, Rollins, anyone, you know, we were looking at those that were going to be effective for the average uh, Ghanaian uh, to be able to live a standard of living that is required. Of, of us or human beings. Agreed. So the PPP is quite new as a party. You don't have any representation in the parliament yet. Um, 2016 is just around the corner. What what does the PPP look like? Well, looking forward to this. fortunately, when we came out uh, in 2012, we were new. Uh, we came up with our agenda for change, and we contested the uh, December. 2012 uh, presidential and parliamentary uh, election. Uh, God being so good to us, uh, the people of Ghana returned us as the third largest uh, political party in Ghana. We were new. We 
We started from last and came in third. We believe that going into 2016, after, after NPP, uh, NDC. all the other, yeah, well, NDC came in first, NPP came in second, and third was uh, the PPP. The PPP came ahead of the CPP. Ahead of the CPP, ahead of the PNC, ahead of all of uh, the other so-called uh, political parties that had been in existence with the beginning of the, of the Fourth Republic. So, so in effect, we did very well, and we hope that based on that performance, we will do even better in 2018. How come then that you don't have any um, representation in, in, in Parliament, for instance? At least well, a seat in Parliament will, will go to show. Oh, yes, 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 yes. A seat in Parliament will definitely uh, have been something to have crowned uh, our efforts. Uh, unfortunately, that uh, didn't happen. But that doesn't uh, uh, marginalize uh, the party. The party is a force in the country right now. We are the only political party out there championing the cause of the marginalized uh, Ghanaian. We believe that it is taking root, it is you know, being recognized by the average Ghanaian voter, and uh, come 2016, uh, it will be reflected in the polls. Let, let me ask you this question, which I, w I, I would need you to answer from a somewhat personal point of view. In, a, in, in such a party, you know, as not as big as the NDC and the NDP, how does it feel? Do you feel like you ever are going to be able to, to clinch power? And well, you know, it is power that will transform uh, the people's lives. And we believe that the people have been voting, at least in the last 20 years, this fourth republic between the NPP and the uh, NDC. And I, I, I don't see any tangible uh, benefits uh, coming out of their lives. And we believe that somewhere along the line, they're going to realize that uh, our position, our view, while whatever we are championing to provide them with education, to ensure that public health and safety is there, to ensure that we have jobs that will be, uh, enable them to earn a decent living, and bring in stewardship that will be devoid of the, the level of corruption that is eating into our system. I think that once the, the, the average voter gets to realize that they, they've been wasting their votes on MPP and NDC, that they will vote there. Okay, now let's talk about what I call the three E's, which every um, personality that we, we you know, speak to, we try to get their opinion on. First of all, the three E's are um, the economy, um, energy, and Ebola, how the government in Ghana today is handling these three areas. Let's start with the economy, for instance. How is President Muhammad faring in terms of the economy? Well, I, I wouldn't go too far. The president uh, himself, Mr. Muhammad himself, has recognized uh, the shortcomings of his administration. That's why he's going to IMF uh, for a bailout. You know, he described it uh, in so many words uh, himself. Whatever plans they have to resuscitate the economy has not worked. Uh, the currency, uh, I'm sure you've been following, uh, when, at some point when it had parity to the dollar, now it's three, uh, uh, Ghana cities plus <laughs> so that affects everything. Uh, the economy is not you know, going very well. Uh, a prominent uh, pastor even recommended uh, that the, uh, the administration should just uh, give up uh, uh, on uh, administering and let somebody more competent uh, take over the administration. The, the problems, uh, you know, with, with, with expenditures, the problems with revenues, and those basic infrastructure that need to be done to uh, alleviate these problems. I'm not being that. We need to have a national identification. So now, it must be done. How, how do you increase revenue when you, you don't know who no, is contributing to yeah. uh, uh, the national development? Mm -hmm. so you can't keep increasing VAT and VAT and VAT at all because VAT is regressive. What it does is that it gets passed on to the next uh, uh, consumer mm -hmm. uh, because whoever is selling, and uh, need to recoup uh, uh, the VAT. So it doesn't help the economy. So inflation just keeps going up. I don't know how they managed to uh, uh, finagle with the numbers, so the, you know, the inflationary numbers seem stable. But the, the, the average Ghanaian is unable to live a day. The minimum wage of six Ghana cities uh, a day, which was just the last uh, June. Uh, by the president's negotiating skills. Six cities 
a day. I mean, what can you do in an economy where you know a meal, you know, kinky and fish can cost you three Ghana uh, uh, cities? Well, uh, water uh, is the pure the pure water sachet is now twenty uh, pesos, mm -hmm. and if you're able to drink uh, one every two hours, maybe uh, five sachets at a city. With six cities a day, how can you you know survive on the basic necessities, transportation, it, it, it has, so the economy is not going right. You know, those who are mostly affected you know, uh, will have to realize that they can't pitch their tent under the uh, 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 NDC or NPP, uh, because for the last 20 years, they've been the ones managing the economy and they failed to do that. When it comes to energy, between the two, let, let me ask you before you go into energy, what part does corruption have to do, have to play in all of this? Because we, we, we also hear a lot about corruption, like, you know, we hear a lot about corruption. Corruption has a lot to play because instead of having uh, uh, jobs, contracts assigned to the right uh, people, they're giving to their lackeys, and their lackeys do not do uh, what they're supposed to do, they do not perform the job uh, is supposed to be. So money is wasted. So if, you know, look at the national uh, identification. I spent so much money uh, from 2008 uh, to get to the middle of it, and now they're looking for another 100 uh, million uh, to, uh, to resuscitate it, complete it, whatever. Nobody seems to know where the money is going. The Auditor General every year audits uh, the public sector and comes out with reports that indicate that about four billion Ghana cities are lost every year. What happens to uh, all of those uh, who have been siphoning uh, of uh, the four billion uh, in the year? Nothing happens to them. So it, the, the, the figure grows, and the figure grows uh, to the point where now we, we have judgment that's you know uh, also consuming part of the national uh, kit. So that's what corruption uh, is doing. Corruption is preventing us, you know, at least from providing the electricity from providing the water, from fixing the roads that are dusty everywhere, and uh, ensuring that at least the average Ghanaian can get a good minimum wage, a good living wage that they can survive. Okay, now let's address um, economy. I mean, sorry, energy. You were just about to go. Yes, you know, energy is is is, is visible, more visible than the, the the economy. As we speak, the lights go off every 24 hours everywhere. I mean, including even easily, easily gone is uh, two thirds as the most affluent uh, uh, region uh, of Accra, and yet it has uh, lights going off, you know, every day, you know, and, and those times when you're supposed to have, you know, it goes, it goes on and off, about four, four five, you know, times uh, in the day. All appliances are getting there. Please track oil. Oil, apart from the extra income, oil also comes with gas. Now, we also hear about um, importing gas from and then we heard, we heard that they just commissioned the Hui Dam. What is going on? Well, you see, we are not being told the truth. Because otherwise, as you just said, the Hui Dam is a strong oil, gas. Why are we uh, still in this? Uh, so something is not tying up. It has to be. Okay, the Hui Dam, uh, I know, uh, uh, is dependent on, uh, on gas. When gas doesn't flow, it shuts down. So what would the, is it the gas that they are relying on, the West African gas uh, pipeline, uh, problems there uh, with the Nigerian uh, workers <laughs> in terms of uh, delivery. So we do not get you know, the adequate supply of gas to maintain the turbines uh, uh, in we everywhere. So that's, you know, it's all falls under stewardship. You know, we, uh, because we do not have competent leaders you know, at the helm of affairs, they are unable to resolve problems as a country. We need problem solvers to occupy the flagstaff house. Let me, let me push you a bit. By stewardship, are you referring to the head steward or do you think he has the wrong people in office, for instance? Well, it has to be both. The, the, constitu the 1992 constitution has vested all the powers in the president. And it is the president that uh, employs all of the mayors in the country. All of the uh, uh, members of the state boards, including their uh, board chairman. 
So the president is the one controlling uh, everything. So if, 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 if something is not going right, you have to go to the head. Uh, I remember one former American president, uh, Reagan, said if, 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 if something goes wrong with the fish, you have to know that it's the head that uh, <laughs> it needs to be uh, examined so first. That's, that's <laughs> the case. So now let's talk about Ebola. Um, I had an, an interview a short while ago with the Deputy Minister for Information, and he said that um, Ghana not experiencing any of the Ebola stress going on right now. It's not by chance at all. It's by prudent management. Is this a sentiment to share? Well, I, I would differ. Uh, we've had cholera, you know, reaching proportions that have not been seen before in the country in this year 2014. Mm -hmm. What is that due to? It's due to the, the, the neglect of the health delivery system, the neglect of our environment. Look at how unsanitary in the people of Ghana, most of the people of Ghana, in fact everywhere, uh, garbage, you know, piling up mm -hmm. uh, everywhere. They have uh, instituted, uh, the Minister of Local Government, you know, last uh, week or so, uh, instituted the National Cleanup. Uh, yeah. day. I don't know how sustainable it is. Uh, how long has it been around for a while? That's what I'm saying. It's, 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 you know, the, 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 the problem has to be solved, you know, with, with, with solutions that will be sustained, not uh, with this uh, uh, gimmick of uh, getting people out uh, once a month, you know, the president leading, you know, shoveling. And how many presidents in the world do you see out there, you know, shoveling uh, the fill part of the, the of, of the gutter? Again, let me ask you. Um, the filth has always been a, a, a major issue in Ghana. Like Accra, the capital is considered one of the filthiest in, in, in the world, for instance, like one of the filthiest capitals in the world. What are we doing wrong? No government seems to have a grip on this. And for the past how many decades now? The problem, at best, stays as it is. What are we not doing right? Well, it's, it's leadership. You know, it's, it's stewardship. You know, uh, if we if we want to be clean, it will have to be by by example. You know, by I mean, how 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 do you keep uh, uh, the city of New York uh, clean uh, to the degree that it is uh, as we, as we see? Every office that you go to you will find trash cans, trash bins there. Uh, when you go out on the street, practically every corner here has trash uh, bins. Do you see that uh, in, in, in Accra? You, you know what they do to the trash bins? Uh, what? They, they vandalism. What? I've seen it. it sure. I mean, but, but, why, vandalism. You see, but why would it be vandalized? Why are the trash bins here not vandalized? Because there is oversight. You know, here, here you walk in the city, you know, you see the police everywhere, you know, ensuring that, you know, people are doing the right thing. The country of Ghana has about 25,000 police force. The whole country, the one, 25,000 police force. New York City alone has close to 50,000 uh, police strength. Something, there's a correlation. The, the United Nations uh, prescribes an average of one police officer to about 200 people. We have 25 million uh, population in Ghana. If you do the arithmetic, what is it? 200 uh, to one uh, ratio. We don't have that. 10 million, uh, 20 million Ghanaians with only uh, 25,000 police force. That can uh, ensure that people do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So now let, let's round up this interview. By rounding up, first of all, let me ask you what is your plan as, as the Progressive People's Party for 2016? Can I, for instance, Want you to perhaps give me a hint on who's going to lead the party in 2016? Well, we haven't opened up a, a nomination for the uh, presidential uh, candidate. Uh, we believe that uh, the current uh, front, front runner um, happens to be the Papa Chrissy Indu. But yet, you know, until we open up nomination, we don't know who else may want to uh, contest the uh, presidency on the ticket of the Progressive People's Party. Invite or any progressive uh, individual who has a well with her uh, and, and, and believes in the agenda, uh, the pragmatic agenda of the Progressive People's Party, come forward and attempt uh, to lead the party uh, to victory. And we believe that the people of Ghana are seeing that the Progressive People's Party is the alternative to MPP, NDC, and will give us a chance 